interné, je suis Funky Monkey. Bienvenue dans ma maison d'amour. And if you hadn't guessed, it's well past time that we had another French film on the House of Love. Only, it's going to be another Luc Besson directed action movie. You see, way, way back in the mists of time, season one to be exact, I reviewed the fifth element. And the thing about the fifth element, the thing that you have to remember about the fifth element, is that the fifth element is to today's subject as Flash Gordon was to Star Wars. Imagine, if you will, that instead of Star Wars, George Lucas actually had managed to get the rights to make a Flash Gordon movie. The pop culture landscape might look very different. But Besson only made the fifth element because he didn't feel confident adapting the adventures of Major Valerian and Sergeant Laureline because he didn't feel that the technology had caught up yet. Until much later, when it had, and he finally pulled the trigger on making today's subject, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Released in 2017, Valerian, or to give it its full title, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, is another typically fantastical adventure for space-time agents Valerian and Laureline. The city-sized space station Alpha has been irradiated, or so it's claimed, but the truth of what's really going on will shock our heroes, and you. Sadly, this movie was considered a box office bomb, and only garnered a 53% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. But you know me, folks. I've never been one to follow the herd. So come with me, mes amis, as we journey across the stars with Major Valerian and Sergeant Laureline to our featured destination, the City of a Thousand Planets. It's another beautiful day on Planet Mule. Until the sky starts exploding. The pearls are the denizens of Mule, and their idyllic life is about to be changed forever by the space battle raging overhead. Space battle, eh? Wonder what that's about. The pearls shelter in a downed ship. But oh dear, one of them stranded outside. But it was all a dream in the mind of Major Valerian. Or perhaps it wasn't, as the ship has detected peculiar brainwaves. External brainwaves, in fact. But there's no time for that, because they're on a mission in a very big market. The mission goes about as well as you'd expect. And the extraction doesn't go much better. But at least they recover the target, a Mulian Converter. These adorable little fellows were used by the Pearls to make more, uh, Pearls. Well, Power Orb, Pearls, you see. Yeah, it's confusing, don't think too hard about it. And we arrive at Alpha Station, the titular city of a thousand planets. Where our heroes are briefed on another mission, about a year ago, a radioactive zone appeared in the heart of the station. More recently, it's begun to expand, which is an obvious problem. Commander Arun Fillet has taken great interest in this matter, but this commander has secrets of his own. Yes, that is a pearl from Mule. But what's he doing on Alpha Station? You'll have to watch the rest of the review to find out. And there's a ruckus in the council room where the commander is kidnapped. Valerian follows, heading right out of sensor range. Commander reluctant to let Laureline follow, but that doesn't really bother her. I can understand their reluctance though. They have just sent one of their best operatives into a dead zone with no way to tell if they're alive or dead. Sending another one after him would seem to be absolute folly. And after not one, Two encounters with the station's aquatic life, Sergeant Laureline finally catches up to her commanding officer. And promptly gets herself captured. Butterfly fishing lures. You know, I've fallen into that trap myself. My unit was on a training exercise in the Amazonian base. Which leads Major Valerian to one of the seedier parts of Alpha. Ay, ay, ay. Come on, you didn't expect me to get through this entire review without making an Alpha 5 joke, did you? 
one Glamopod makeover later, and our hero ventures into Bolan Bathor country to rescue Laureline from a rather nasty fate. So what's all this about? Bulan Bathors only let their own into their corner of the station, and lacking a holographic disguise, because apparently plot, Valerian found a glamopod to become his disguise. The general discovers what really happened on Mule, and so our heroes reach the supposed dead zone, and we finally discover what this is all about. So as we know, a space battle above Mule brought down a ship where the Pearls found refuge. But when one side's mother ship crashed into the planet, it was big enough to destroy their entire world. And so they drifted through space, ending up somewhere in Alpha's superstructure. But one of the sides in that fateful space battle was humanity itself, and the human captain ignored a report of a sentient life form on Mule to launch nuclear missiles at the enemy command ship. The commander attempts to justify himself, but Valerian's having none of it. And so our heroes make right what humanity did wrong. But an even greater wrong is about to be committed. Yes, Philit was the commander on the ship that sent his enemy's command ship into Mule. The whole thing was covered up and would have remained closed. But fate has a way of reopening old wounds. Commander Philit, however, would choose death over dishonour, and orders his personal robot guard to fire on friendly forces, and protect the countdown on explosives set up to collapse the dead zone. But our heroes, and the command crew, step up to put an end to the commander's machinations. And just in time, as the Pearls repower their ship, now a holographic recreation of Mule, and sail off to new adventures. And so our movie ends with Valerian and Laureline adrift in an escape pod, with a little time to kill. And the moral of the story? Don't shoot down giant alien motherships over sentient inhabited planets. It's just not cool. Anyway, that was Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. And actually, I'm going to put this one into my house of love. There's a lot that's wrong with this movie. If you've seen the original French comic, or even the typical action movie, then you'll agree that Dane DeHaan is just far too slight as an action hero. He's no Arnie, Sly, or Henry Cavill for a more contemporary example, and the plot of the movie is very episodic, making for a very staccato flow. But of his performance, DeHaan, Cara Delevingne, and even main villain Clive Owen emote very little. Noticeably so, when compared to the performances the cast of The Fifth Element gave, our main couple have very little chemistry. For two agents who are supposed to be so madly in love with one another, and alternately sniping at one another before praising each other's actions in the next breath is dizzying. Perhaps it's more of a culture thing. And as I say, the movie feels more like a serial, a series of vignettes that could have easily been padded together to make maybe a six-part prestige TV show, possibly even leading to a full series. But it doesn't really hang together as a movie in my opinion, and while the central message, that of owning your mistakes no matter the cost, or perhaps considering your actions in light of new information, seems a little heavy-handed by the final scenes, it's still a very important message. I mean, don't get me wrong here, the CG is fantastic, and the world of Mule, for an alien desert at least, is beautiful, as are the pearls themselves, whereas the Dogan Dagi are humorous little squat things, finishing each other's sentences and following Laureline around like lost little puppies. So then, in light of all this, is it a good movie? In terms of action? Yes. It's a rip-roaring romp through the future of the International Space Station with a surprising heart. What it isn't though, is believably acted. I mean, if someone asked me what flat direction looked like, I could point them in the direction of the dialogue in this movie. Overall though, apart from the miscast leads, there's plenty to keep you entertained, from the mesmerising visuals to the skewed French satire. And at its core, this is a movie about love, and while I can't really speak about that, I can tell you to take the time to watch Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets for yourselves. J'ai été Funky Monkey, 
vous souhaitons de bonnes journées et de bons divertissements. Au revoir. Hey folks, Funky again. If you liked the video, you know where that button is. But why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!